Well, the Bruins had a good game last night. They found a way to get a victory 3-2 in overtime against Ottawa. Let's talk about everything Bruins. We do it each and every Friday at 11.25. Our guy Andrew Razor Raycroft of Nesson and WEEI here with Gresham Fourier. Razor, good morning. Morning. I love the new remix. Great job, Fourier. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about that. I was supposed to, I, yeah, was, I forgot all it about it. Oh, right, listen, Lace, hey, you know what? Razor. This is par for the course. Yep, Razor, on the on the first week we worked, <laughs> on the first week we worked together, Foyer was like, yeah, I'm going to do a Foyer Music Friday. It happened once. Wait, I had, Razor, I have every, I had every bit of intentions to do this. I should have yeah. written it on my hand. This is what I, this is what I do. If I and, and Gresh sees me write the stuff on all my hands the all the time, he's like, "What is that?" I was like, "Well, I got to pick up the dry cleaning. Oh, I got to remember we have practice tonight. Oh my God, uh, make sure I pay my bills." I right, listen <laughs> to next week. I promise. Hold on, I'm putting it on. Okay, what what am I doing again? <laughs> Open for Razor. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> listen, you finally got me. Congratulations. Finally got you. Hey, at least you followed through a jock itch. We you I followed know. through on one thing, and that was jock. Well, that is true, but that was also born out of me being sick or taking a day off or whatever. Oh, you so. went on vacation. Yeah, but that's right. what was vacation. That, that's a passion project of mine, though, uh, Razor. You know that, right? Jock itch is a passion I project. Yes, I was trying to get Razor the in today. To scratch I was balls. trying to get uh, <laughs> Lou because Lou. Okay, so Razor's in at eleven twenty. Yeah, Lou's coming on at twelve. Uh huh. Why can't they both come up, come into the studio at the same time? In, and no, we'll do yeah. both sports, right, Razor? The, nobody called. I would. I could have done that today for you for sure. Yeah, because then you done. you could talk about the Red Sox. And I love and hanging issues. out with Lou too. Yeah, right. I mean, that's what that's what Jockage is all about. I love this. Yeah. Hey, uh, I love hanging out with Lou too. He's never agreed to do any of this. He's only coming on for like <laughs> no. ten minutes on the phone. I called but Lou about this, of, but in the mind no. of Fourier, this is the way this goes. No, I talked to Lou about it, and he he doesn't want to drive in. He just never responded to my text. That's where you I was go. like, what a jerk. He's gonna act like he missed it. Watch. He'd be like, oh, I didn't even see you text me. Watch. When he comes in, when he got the text, he went. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then you're gonna yell Traffic. At him. No. Oh boy. Well, a. Hey, uh, I thought that was a pretty gutty performance last night, Razor. The whole back to back, uh, up two one in the third. You give up the goal late. You still find a way to win. Was last night one of those? Hey, listen, it was ugly in a lot of ways, but just find a way to get the win and get the hell out of there. Nights last night. That's exactly what it was. They they weren't very good. Uh, on top of all of that, right? Like the first period, they couldn't connect passes. I don't think they made more than two passes in a row. Um, but I, that's, that's again, that's why this team's great. And, and that's why it, they're enjoyable. They should be very likable for everybody who's out there who's a sports fan. Because all they talk, everyone always talks about they want the, the, the team that works hard, puts their head down, are professionals, treat the game with respect. That's what this team does all the time. And I think last night was a great example of that. They they have sixty seven points. They're in the playoffs. They could have mailed that one in. They're going all. They're all going to the Caribbean in three days. Ooh. Like, but they don't. And and, and Brad Marchand leads the way again. This guy is is legit in his leadership and his captaincy, and he continues to prove that. So yeah, it was a gutty win. I mean, if they had a loss, if now that they've won, I don't think we're ever going to remember this game again. But it, it just goes to show how much they care and, and and how much they enjoy winning. So Razor, um, the Carolina Carolina Hurricanes game, um, Montgomery came on uh, and post game and was talking about like uh, pinching, like they they like they 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 didn't create the right defensive uh, performance, whatever pinching, something about pinching. And I thought it was Lindholm, yeah. right? I wanted to see if you can explain what the hell he was talking about because I I. I I don't know what I'm looking at. I need you to explain it to me. Perfect. So, yeah, game management, right? Game yeah. management. Come on, teach me something. <laughs> if, if he I says, hey, you, you didn't pinch, I was like, what do you mean I didn't pinch? So, so the, the, easiest way, the easiest explanation of pinching is when a defenseman goes into the offensive zone from the blue line and runs down on, on a winger, right? The breakout pass and, and the defensemen. The defensemen are the only ones who can pinch on the ice, essentially. Wingers don't really pinch. Centermen don't pinch. The defensemen pinch into the offensive zone, which means they take a risk. They try and keep the puck in the offensive zone. In the situation the other night against Carolina, the Bruins have done this since Jim Montgomery. He wants the weak side D, right? Do we, the, the defensemen on the opposite side of the ice, without the puck. You still with me, Fourier? I got you. Keep going. I'm writing it down. Okay, perfect. So 
Pasternak shoots the puck on goal uh, from the right side of the ice. Lindholm's on the left side of the ice. He's driving down, looking for a rebound or a miss net. And he, they've been doing that a lot. Last season, this season, that's what Montgomery wants. Not necessarily with three minutes left in a tie game 2-2 against the Carolina Hurricanes. So Lindholm goes down, he gets caught in no man's land. Unfortunately for him, the rebound goes right to the Carolina defenseman, and he sends it out of the zone right away. So Lindholm's in no man's land. The forwards see that he's in no man's land, don't know what to do. They don't get back in time, and you give up a breakaway with two and a half minutes left on home ice, which absolutely makes any coach heated. So so, so we just nerded out real quick. We just massively For you, it's hockey like a, nerded out. It, it's we like, just, I went black for a second. It's like the slot That's receiver. Like talking about linemen or something. No, yeah, I was, no, no, no impressive. Right I, I wasn't it's sure. Like gap. Right? It's like, like, the, what's the a gap? No, it's like a slot receiver sliding deep into zone coverage and the ball going over the top. It's like you slid behind the defenseman, therefore giving up the one-on-one. Well, I mean, listen, you hear all these terms, and listen, I'm not a hockey hardo, so I, I, I use Razor every Friday to kind of get my fill. No. And, and last week we talked great about, question. And we talked about Once you got it some out. kind of pinching. I love it. The <laughs> twitches are great. <laughs> Once you got it out, so, some it's kind time of for me to go now. <laughs> <laughs> to go now. Razor, no. you need to come in yeah. to help him out. With no, that. because uh, <laughs> last week we talked about Lindholm, and I'm curious if was that just a massive blunder on him? And for every good thing he does, is he doing three bad things? And or is it just like is he can he not just get a long line and bunch of games of being consistent? No, I think I think it's kind. Of, it's they, he's doing three great things, and then one thing every once in a while where he gets a little too aggressive. Um, it, it's it's a. I wouldn't say it's a. It's not a problem. It's it's just part of his game. At times he jumps, but again, what what the the, the other thing too, right? It was very obvious that what happened the other night. But they've done that two thousand times in the last hundred and fifty games under Jim Montgomery. And most of the time it works, either they keep, or at worst, they give up a two-on-two out of that. It was just the circumstance of that play. It, the, the puck coming off the goalie's pad couldn't have gone to a worse place if you're Hampus Lindholm. And then the players weren't able to react because of where that puck went. If it goes, if Pasternak misses the net wide, Lindholm's on that puck, he keeps it in, and maybe they score a goal. So it, the play is easy to dissect because they lost on it with two and a half minutes left, but they do do that quite often, and 75% of the time they, they keep possession. It feels like this discussion happened in like 2015 or whatever when Claude was here. He doesn't let the D-man pinch, and then they start letting him pinch, and then it's, oh, well, then it gets behind him, and you get into all of the you know hockey talk, how aggressive the defensemen should be, yada, yada. We, it feels like we went through that for a while. Uh, Razor, I did have a, a Twitcher who did throw this question in. It was something that was on the radar anyway. Is Trent Frederick on his way to being a top six forward, or is that a bit of an overreaction? I don't think it's an overreaction. I think the his, his trajectory since being healthy scratched in the first game of last season, the first game Jim Montgomery coached as a Boston Bruin, he healthy scratched. Trent Frederick, who is established as an NHL or at least a fourth liner at that point. Um, since then, it's been uh, it's been a straight 45-degree angle for Trent Frederick on the graph, and he continues to grow his game. I feel like I was talking about it on post-game last night or, or pre-game. Uh, the game's slowing down for him, and it's about that time in his career where you're 25, 26, where it either slows down or you slow down just a little bit and, and you're out of the league. And, and for Trent, he's, he's getting better. And, and we saw it again last night. He found some ice. He's able to, he's got a great shot now. Uh, he's moving his feet. And for me, he's just holding on to pucks more. He, he, the game's slowing down. He's not just getting rid of it all the time. And He's certainly trending, you know, he, he's looking like he could be a 40-point, 40 45-point guy this season. And, and yeah, the, the, the future is bright if you can get him into the top six. Because, again, the good thing with Trent, too, is he can play center, he can play, play both wings. And he's shown that over his career. So, yeah, he is trending that way. And, and uh, I think you have to give him a lot of credit for getting his game to this point. Our guy Andrew Razor Raycroft with us each and every Friday talking hockey with Gresh and Fourier here on WEEI. Again, I know it came up in the Twitch chat, and I had pulled up 
uh, the name Parker Watherspoon. How much longer am I going to have to watch that guy ping ding a ling around, skating past the puck, over the puck, losing the puck? Good Lord, there were times last night, Razor, where it felt like the Bruins were just trash trying to get it out of their own end, and he was a part of it. Uh, yes, I think everyone was at was guilty of that last night. Definitely. I mean, I mean, it was it was it was a grind just getting pucks out of the zone, and even when they got into the neutral zone, they couldn't even flip it into the offensive zone at times. It was it was a grind. It was a slog. Uh, Parker's been uh, an interesting addition in that you didn't really see him coming. Uh, he has played thirty forty games in the National Hockey League going into this season. Went right to the minors. Was expected to be uh, a guy who helped out down there and and helped a guy like Mason Lowry and and won games down there, but. He's come up and uh, another little nerd out for you, for you. Come on, let's that go. He's a left left-handed shot defenseman playing over on the right side a lot. Wow! And that's look at that. That's something. It's difficult at times. So there's certain situations where it makes it harder. It's certainly not natural. Most guys play on their their proper off, off proper side. Um, but him jumping in and doing that, he's he's just a little different than a Shattenkirk, than a Grizzlick than a McAvoy, then a Lindholm, who are puck moving and get up into the rush. He's a little simpler, more like Derek Forber, and I think the contrast of that has really helped the Bruins on the back end. He's, he's done a really nice job and made it hard for the Bruins to certainly take him out of the lineup, let alone send him down. Marshy gets goal 396 last night. It's a big one. He, uh, he what was it, passes Bork, I think it is? or I mean, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're talking about Brad Marshawn being up there with – some of the legends in the game of hockey. How can you kind of put into perspective, Razor, from the mind of a former player, the evolution of Brad Martian? It's 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 stunning. It's not. I don't recall any any other guys that came so underhyped, came in as a fourth liner. Uh, just that image of him punching one of the twins in the face 15 times in the Stanley Cup final, like being being a guy that gets under the skin of everybody, being a rat, licking guys, and now all of a sudden you look up and he's a 400 goal scorer. He's going to play a thousand games with just the Boston Bruins. He's going to he's going to get Patrice Bergeron in scoring next season. Um, it's I, there isn't a comparison for me, and and we've talked a lot about it, but but. He's going to end up in the Hall of Fame, yeah. and and no one, absolutely no one, would have predicted that in 2015. Like you just talked about, Gresh, go back to there. Uh, no one would have predicted it, and it's just a, uh, it's a credit to how much he competes and and how hard of a worker he is. All right, so Razor, are you checking out for a week? You have no reason to watch all. Oh, he's got to come the, in now. No, but all the All Star whatnot and things like that. You don't got to pay attention to that, do you? Nope, not at all. Um, I was, I was, at, uh, there was talk of me going up to Toronto. It didn't end up being quite worth it um, for me. So no, I'm, I'm, you know, I work in the game tomorrow afternoon. Um, I don't even think I have NHL radio next week. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be completely checked out. Unfortunately, my kids are in, like, I don't get to go to Puerto Rico or anything like that. But uh, a little staycation, maybe. Wait, where, where, where is the get a silent house? Appreciate where, that. Where is the the I guess the go to spot for hockey players on the East Coast? Is it direct flight only? You know, you're not doing the Cancun thing I'd be layover. Going to Bermuda. Where where would they be going? Oh, you can get to Cancun. I went to Cancun okay. twice during my career during All Star break. I know there are some people going to Cancun this week because uh, you can get there direct from Boston. Um, and that's really kind of the only place in Mexico you can go, right? Otherwise, you go Puerto Rico, you go Caribbean, one of the nice islands. If you're, you know, a guy making ten million bucks, you go to what the Saint Bart's or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, Saint Martin. You go to one of the. Uh, yeah, I'm shocked people don't bring up Bermuda. It's but, like, it, it, yeah, but it, don't it, you want guaranteed uh, weather? And if you want guaranteed yeah, you weather, you go to Aruba. Yeah, well, the, the weather in Bermuda oh, yeah. hasn't gotten below like 67 degrees or whatever in like I don't know 40 years or something yeah, like you know, that. Here's what you do. It's you find nice you, here's what you do, Razor. You find the equator, find that little line on the map. <laughs> And the closest, I, whatever the island or place is, that's where you go. That's where the heat. You'll always find the heat if Curacao. you just follow the yeah, follow the equator. That's it. That's where you'll always get eighty degree temperatures throughout the year. There's a there's a life hack for you. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, you're going to have a terrible second half of the season if you go on all star break and it rains for three days. Like, oh. you have no chance. Your wife's miserable. Yep. You have kids. They're miserable. Like, you you're want not a guarantee. Gonna live it down, and you're going to play horribly the rest of the way. You need a guarantee. I agree. But, Razor, with your uh, pale Canadian skin, can you uh, <laughs> deal with long exposures in hot sun like oh. that, where if you're near the equator, you would get completely torched in a massive sunburn? That is true. I mean, I have I have some maybe, yeah, I, I, I have a little bit of a darker complexion than, than maybe some of my Irish folks, but uh, you, you do think about that. Like, you can't come back and put your gear on with a sunburn. It hurts like hell. And it's be really there. aggravating. Oh. So but you do think about it. Like, you lather up. Like, there's no, it's not like a midsummer where eh, I get burned, I can deal with it. You, you, I thought about it all the time because you didn't want to come back with that. Yeah, but you also can't be the guy, you know, with a t shirt and socks on and a big old <laughs> surf hat, right? That's actually <laughs> worse. I'll take my yeah. chances. <laughs> I'll take my chances with a burn. Yeah, so Razor, it sounds like you might have played with one or two guys in the NHL who may have come back with a big sunburn, or did you make that mistake yourself? No, I never made it myself, but I I certainly experienced it. It's it's almost a given that somebody's going to fall asleep, slash pass out at the pool (laughs) over uh, over their break. (laughs) And they're gonna get burnt, and it's comical. Like everyone, <laughs> what the guy you do see the guy who's burnt, and everybody sits there and watches him put his equipment on because you know it's miserable. And you'll also rub up against him in practice, right? And like scratch of the whole thing. It's yeah, it's it's inevitable. Somebody oh. will do it. And you, we'll be able to see it on TV too, right? Like we'll see them come back with an extra tan, and you know that guy. Oh, he got burnt. Oh, do do you have first game back after the break? Like, are you gonna? Well, these guys. Yeah, we do. We have it. It must be like the Tuesday night back. But these guys all go away because the NHL has, like, they've given it. that. So the NHL has given everybody five extra days, whether it's before the All-Star break or after the All-Star break. So so even Jeremy Swayman and David Pasternak get to go away for a couple days before the All-Star game. And then half the league will play then, and then half the league will play after, and guys will get a break afterwards. So So everybody gets a break. And by the time guys get back from All Star break, they'll have actually had their vacation for a week. So it won't be as quite as as obvious with Bruins this season. Oh God, I'd love for you to be pointing that out on the uh, ringside <laughs> down there. That'd be fa- <laughs> that's <true. laughs> It'd be fantastic. That's good info. Actually, I'll do that. It actually would. I mean, if something, I'm telling you, that would be uh, that'd go viral, no question. Our guy Andrew Raycroft, he's with us each and every Friday here on Gretchen Fourier. Razor, thank you, buddy. We appreciate it. Uh, enjoy the uh, downtime, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks, buddy. Awesome. Have a weekend. There, there we go. go. There goes our guy, uh, Razor. Great stuff there. How about that on the sunburn? I never thought of it. It's important. If you're a goalie, you can't even, like, if you're a, I mean, if you're skating around, maybe there's a way you can kind of get through it in practice. But if you're a goalie with all that heavy equipment on, man, you can't have I'm telling sunburn. you, and the key is guaranteed heat. You can't go to Florida. You can't go. No, you got to go. You follow that line. You find that line. Bermuda's you find warm. The, oh, it's an hour forty five minute ride. You I don't know. know it's is? not. All, that's it's not like, true though. It's like it East isn't Coast, always Hawaii. warm. It isn't always warm. Yeah, it is. No, that's not true. Okay, what do you think? I'm the gonna, low. What do you think the low? Well, okay, what do you think? No, what do you think? I've, okay, what do you think? I, the, when we went, I looked this up. So please, tell is what me. is a, a high of seventy? Is no, that good enough for you? We, no, no, no. We thought though that was like the low. Like they at the worst, their lows get into like the low sixties, mm. but they're into the seventies and eighties every day. I sixty eight degrees in Bermuda right now. I, I don't. I don't know where that's this is. Too, that's Bermuda. not warm enough. But I think but it's, it's also supposed to rain on Monday. That's my point. Don't. Yeah, no, it might. It's a trap. It might flash. Rain real quick, that's but it's not, not going to rain enough. the you whole have a high day. Of Seventy. That's not. That's not what you're looking for. It's but be again, the low sixties next week. But again, if you're looking for something quick, it's an hour I'm and saying, forty during minutes. The summer, it's like yes. six hours to go to freaking Aruba. No, it isn't. It's four. It's from like three hours and forty minutes from Boston. Ah, yes, it's close. Cancun is the one. It's a six-hour flight. No, it's a direct. You want to make a bet? Do you want? I, I yeah, guarantee it, it, you, is not a six-hour flight is L.A. Huh? Six hour flight is LA. You're going to the equator. Nonstop is four hours and fifty minutes. Five. Five. So we split we the difference. It's tie.